When you're learning guitar, you may hear the term 145 or 135, and you may not know what people are talking about. So I want to go into the Nashville number system and intervals today to just explain what people are talking about and make you understand this aspect of music theory, which can be very helpful. So when you look at music theory, everything's built off the major scale. So if we just take a G major scale right here, start on your third fret of your low E string, and it goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the reason that's so important is because everything in music theory is built off of the major scale. So when you hear somebody say one, four, five, that's the Nashville number system. And we'll get more into intervals in a little bit and the one, three, five that people are talking about. But you have scale degrees within this major scale. And those scale degrees are just what we counted through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is your octave. So that's where the scale starts to repeat. Those scale degrees can also be considered intervals. And if you're really gonna look at them as intervals, then you're supposed to add on that these are one, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, back to eight. So you can flatten some of those intervals to make a minor, like your, your major second could become a minor second by just going down a half step. That's the Jaws song, and then you can make a main... A major third into a minor third. That would be your major third right here. Just by flattening that turns it into a minor third. You can hear that sounds a little darker. On this channel we like to talk guitar and we're trying to get better at guitar so if that's something you're into then please like and subscribe. Your intervals are all based off of your major scale but when you're talking about the Nashville number system, you're really talking about chord progression. So when somebody says a one, four, five, they're typically talking about a chord progression, that they're playing a one, four, five chord progression. And 12 bar blues are typically built off of a one, four, five chord progression. So what that means is if you have a 12 bar blues, you play four bars of your one chord, which could be a G in this instance. You'd play four bars of your G, then you'd play two bars of your four chord which would be one, two, three, four. So there you have your four chord, and then you go back to your one chord for two bars. Then you go to your five chord for one bar. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. Then you go back to your four chord for one bar. Then you go back to your one chord for two bars during the turnaround. And the Nashville number system is super helpful because if somebody says they want to play a one, four, five, and G, you can find it. If somebody says they want to play a 1, 4, 5, and E, you can find it, right? You have your E major chords, your 1 chord, so you'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, so it'd be an A, which is also right here, and then a whole step away is your next chord, which is a B. So you'd have 1, 4, 5. And it helps you transpose into separate keys so you can play the same chord progression in different keys very easily. And you can understand what chords make up your keys. So another thing to understand is when you're talking about chords and you're talking about keys, you have, you have three major chords, you have three minor chords, and you have one diminished chord. So the three major chords in a major key are your one, your four, and your five. So your one, four, five are always major chords when you're in a major key. And when you're talking about minor chords, it's your two, your three, and your six. Your two, three, six are always minor. So if you have a chord progression that's one, five, six, four, you know your one chord's major, your five chord's major, your six chord is minor, and your four chord is major. So that's a common pop chord progression that would go like this, and you can transpose it down to here, in, in the key of A, it'd be A to E, F sharp minor to D. But you can also just think of that as a one, five, six, four, because those, those chords are always gonna be the same relative to the key that they're in. 
So that's how you understand the Nashville number system. And it's really just assigning a number to each chord. And if you, if you understand what chords are major and what chords are minor, then you can really transpose anything really quickly and understand what the chord progression is that you're playing. Now we're gonna talk more about intervals. So if you hear somebody talking about a one, three, five, you may think, okay, I know the Nashville number system. They want me to play a one, a three, one chord, a three chord, and a five chord. And that could be the case, but typically when you're hearing somebody, an instructor talk about a one, three, five, they're talking about a major chord because everything in music is built off of intervals. So when you have a, a one, a major third, and a perfect fifth, that makes up a major chord. So let's say you just have this A chord here. Well, it's all built off of this major scale, right? So you have a one, two, three, four, five. So you have a five there. You have your octave here. So a one, five makes up a power chord. That's your power chord. And then you're at a one again. So you could go one, two, three, right? It's that same shape. So now you have a one, five, one, three. So right there at the top or the bottom of that chord, you would have a major chord, but then you're gonna add in a couple more notes. Three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight. So you have a one, five, three. And then if you hear a one flat three, five, they're talking about a minor chord. So all you have to do is take that major, that major third, which you knew where that, that was on your G string, at least in this shape, and you just flatten that. So you just pick up that middle finger, and you probably know this shape, right? But you may not, you may just know that this is a minor chord. You may not know how it becomes a minor chord, or the chord construction behind it. And it just makes it into a minor chord by taking that middle finger off, and now you have flattened that third and made it a flat three. And then if you're gonna talk about seventh chords, major seventh chords, you're adding in, for a seventh chord, you're adding in a flat seven. We're gonna stay on this A chord and we're gonna make it into a seventh chord. So you want a flat seven in here. So you have a one here, five here, one here. Well, to make it a flat seven, you just go down a whole step because going down a half step would make it into a major seventh. Going down a whole step makes it into a flat seven. So that's flat seven. If you want to turn this into a minor minor seventh chord, just pick up pick up that middle finger too. So you flattened your third and you've turned your one into a flat seven by lifting up that pinky. Major seventh are similar. You would just you would flatten this D string down from your one and make that into a major seventh. And that'll give you the major seventh sound. And once you understand chord construction and you understand the Nashville number system, it makes it a lot easier to start targeting chord tones when you're playing lead guitar. Because now you know oh, I'm playing a one, four, five chord, right? And you have that one, four, and five chord. Well, you know those are major chords, so they're all one, three, fives. So you should be targeting the one, the three, and the five of each of those chords to resolve on when you're playing lead guitar. And that's a bigger concept that probably requires another video to go into, but that's what you need to start thinking about if you really wanna use music theory to start soloing and start worrying about what notes you're targeting. And if you're playing a minor chord, you wanna target that minor third instead of the major third. And these notes are all within the scale, so you can always target these notes within the scale as you're playing and you can start sounding more melodic when you're soloing, but just having a basic understanding of intervals and the Nashville number system can take you a long way on guitar because you can start understanding what you're playing. Instead of just playing shapes, you start to understand the notes that you're playing and how they correlate to each other. I hope you liked this lesson. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.